Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. And in this video, you'll be learning about how to perform the Twitter splash screen animation. Now, in order to first understand what Twitter splash screen animation looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at a very simple animation. There we go. That is the Twitter splash screen animation. You can see that the Actual app starts with this icon of Twitter in the middle with a blue background. It compresses and then it kind of expands out. And as soon as it expands out, it actually shows you the other screen, basically the main Twitter list screen. So that is what we're trying to create. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've already added the assets. So we have a logo for Twitter. You can actually download the logo from Twitter from the Twitter website. Uh, if you just search for Twitter logo, you can download it. Okay. So once we have that, there are a couple of different things we need to do. Um, we need to start with creating or displaying the logo on the screen. That's the first part, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start with a Z stack. And in the Z stack, I'm going to have a vertical stack. And over here, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I want to display the logo. We will make it resizable. We will also say that the aspect ratio of the logo is fit. And next thing is we want to set the frame for our V stack. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the frame to be maximum width, to be infinity, and maximum height to be infinity. The logo is being displayed, but it, since it is white, we can't really see it. So let's go ahead and change the background color to whatever, blue. And there we go. The logo is there. All right. It's a pretty big logo right now, but we are going to take care of that. Okay. All right. So this allows us to at least see the actual logo. Now, the size of the logo is just too big. We need to make sure that the size of the logo is, when you're starting out, it's a little bit smaller than this. So we need to perform a scale effect. Let's go ahead and say, if I say 0 0.5, you can see the logo goes a little bit smaller. But this is a part that's going to be dynamic, meaning that it's going to start small, then it's going to compress a little bit, and then kind of expand as we have seen in the video. If you look at the video very carefully, you can see over here, if you just keep your eyes over here, you can see that the logo compresses a little bit, meaning the logo scales uh, smaller and then it goes out, right? So we have to create that kind of a animation effect. Okay, so how do we do this? So let's go ahead and say scale effect. And we can have different kind of animation states. So I'm just going to go ahead and create an enum, and I will call it animation state. Animation state simply is an enum, which can have uh, states like compress, meaning now you have to compress. We can have a, well, we can actually start with a normal, meaning when the app is actually launching. And then we have compress, and then we have expand. So these are three different animation states that we have. All right. And based on these three animation states, we are going to calculate the scale effect, which is going to go right there. So I'm going to create a function called calculate, which is going to return the scale effect, which is double. And I'm going to check the animation state. Well, I don't have it anything right now. So let's go ahead and create the animation state as a state property. Just going to go ahead and say animation state which is animation state with starting with normal, meaning starting point of our app. And now we can go ahead and check out animation state. If it is normal, then we will return simply some sort of a number for our scale effect. We'll just say 0 0.2. If it is compressed, then we want to return a number that is less than the normal so that we can see the compression. So 0 0.18 is fine and expand again, we'll just return 10 for now, and that will work. Okay, so now we can go back into our scaled effect, 
and we can simply go ahead over here in the scale effect and we can say calculate. Let's go ahead and refresh our view. Okay, so you can already see that the normal one is actually taking effect, which is 0 0.2. That's because we have set it to normal. If I change this to compress, we will be able to see, maybe it's a little bit compressed, but let's go ahead and see what happens. Little bit, all right. And then finally, if I change it to expand, I should be able to see a little bit more bigger Twitter bird, which is so big that you can't even see it. All right, so we'll start with normal. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so currently it's not really animating. Nothing is going on. If I run the app, you can see it's just like this. It's kind of like the home screen, but it's not really animating. It's not doing anything. The other thing that we need to do is when the actual view up here, which in this case is a Z stack, then we can perform animation. Now we want to perform animation after a few seconds. So I can go ahead and use a dispatch queue dot main dot async after and we can perform now whatever is now plus 0 0.5 so half a second and we can do something over here. Alright we can change the animation state to be compress. So after five seconds it's going to compress and if I run it again here we go you can see it's doing it again. Let's run it again. There we go. All right. But we need to animate this. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this with with animation. And we can actually say that we're going to use spring animation. And there we go. A little bit. You can see the effect. Very subtle effect. Just compressing a little bit. All right. So after. We have compressed. Now we can also go ahead and wait a little bit at that time. Uh, we can compress it and yeah. So after that, we're going to wait a little bit more. Dispatch queue dot main dot async after. And we're going to wait dot now plus 0 0.5, half a second. And after half a second, we are again going to perform the animation state. In this case, we're just going to change it to expand. Now you can see that it is expanding. Let's do it again. There we go. And we can actually wrap this again with animation. Spring animation. I mean, you can use any animation you want over here. It's going to have the same kind of effect. You can see a little bit clearly, you can see the because of the spring effect, it's a little bit nicer. All right. Okay. So this is how our bird, meaning the Twitter logo, is going to animate. Now, once the animation is actually finished, we want to show the view that is behind it, meaning we want to show the list. So the first thing is this, we need to create a list. So I'm going to go over here into my Z stack and create the list before my Twitter control. Okay, hold on a second. Let's go ahead and make sure that I am stopping this animation. There we go. Okay, so let's create a list. These are all the tweets. You can see that we're hard coding it. So index in, and then we can simply say tweet and the index. The list style, we can just use the plain list style. All right. Now, if you do want to see the list, how will it look like? Well, I can just comment this part out so you can see the list. Nothing really interesting. It's just a list of tweets. All right. The other thing that we want to do is when the tweets are displayed, when this list is being displayed, we actually want to also show the navigation bar. So we're going to take care of that later. But right now you can see the list is being displayed. Now, if I uncomment this part out, then since it's a Z stack, this stack is in front of the list. So that's why you're not able to see the list, but the list is still there. All right. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I do an animation. It just the whole screen kind of turns white. 
So what we want to do is when you are performing this animation and when this animation is actually done, then we can go ahead and maybe change the opacity of the VStack so that the list is visible. In order to change the opacity, I'm just going to go ahead and create another state variable and we will call it done, which will be false. All right, so eventually after some point, after you have expanded it, we can again perform uh, some sort of animation to say done equals to true. But I want to add some animation over here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and say with animation. What kind of animation? I'm just going to use the spring animation. So over here, we can you can test out different values. These are the different values that I'm passing. Stiffness, if you have a very, very stiff spring, then obviously it's not really going to create that spring animation that you want. So I'm just going to add a couple of these different things. And then I'm going to go ahead and say done is true. If done is actually true, then we can make sure that the opacity done, if it's true, it will be zero, else it will be one. And the opacity is going to also play in a factor in our list. But let's go ahead and run this right now and see what happens. Okay, we can definitely see, let's go ahead again. We can definitely see the list being displayed. But what I want to do is to have the list bouncing a little bit, just a little bit. So I can go ahead and create the scale effect. I can say if the done is true, then use one or else 0 0.95. So just a very small bounce. See that very subtle. All right. So one of the things that I was mentioning is when the list is being displayed, we also want to show you the navigation bar or the navigation view. So let's go ahead and first of all, we need to make sure that we are wrapping everything with navigation view. So I'm going to go on the top somewhere and I'm going to say navigation view. And probably we're just going to wrap everything in navigation view. There we go. Everything is in navigation view. Now, when we put everything in navigation view, um, you can see that the Twitter logo is now a little bit at the bottom. And the reason is that the navigation view the navigation bar is taking up some space. Now we don't really want to show the navigation bar on the top when we are showing the splash screen. So we should be able to hide it somehow. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can hide it. We can go over here and say navigation bar hidden. This one. If it's done, then it's not hidden else it is hidden. All right. So now you can see that it is hidden because done is actually not true. The other thing we need to do is we need to add some sort of a navigation title. So I'm just going to go ahead and add navigation title. I will call it home. And also the navigation display mode because we want not the big large title navigation, just an inline will work. Now let's go ahead and run this. Much better. See, let's go ahead and run it again. And there we go. So we created this simple, nice animation for our Twitter. You can see the Twitter splash screen navigation. And it looks great. Everything looks like it's working correctly. And it didn't really took us that long to create this kind of a animation. I hope you have really enjoyed it. And I will also add the code for it in the gist so you can download the code. All right. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. The link to all the courses is right there in the YouTube description. You can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, including MVVM design pattern, combined framework, even Mac OS using Swift UI, Swift for Intermediate, and my brand new course on introduction to server driven UI in iOS. So that is a completely new course that you are going to enjoy. So if cookbook, uh, Vapor for a lot, core data even. So check out my courses. The link 
is always in the YouTube description. Thank you so much.